Part one. You are about to hear a telephone conversation between a man and a woman about a rental property. First, you have some time to look at questions one to seven. Now listen carefully and answer questions one to seven. Central Realty, Jill speaking. How can I help you? Yes, hello, Jill. I've got a problem, a complaint I wish to register. Who should I speak to? You'll want to speak to Tracy, the residential manager. Just a moment, and I'll put you through. Thanks. Hello, this is Tracy. I understand your rent is going to be increased. Yes, this is why I'm calling. I was told that my rent would not be increased for the length of my six-month contract, which I signed only four months ago. What's going on? Is my landlord allowed to do this? I see. Yes. Okay. That seems strange. Look, can I take down some of your particulars, and I'll register a formal complaint to the landlord on your behalf? Yes, sure. That'd be good. Firstly, name and address, contact details. Yes, Jane McSweeney. That's M C S W E E N Y, Three Mauger Street. That's M A U G H E R Street, Windoree, double three double five. And the phone there? Yes, you can contact me on double three four seven five six extension three one seven six. I generally arrive home by six o'clock in the evening, so you can call me around that time, but not after nine. Oh, sorry, eight thirty, because that's the time I leave for work. Okay, so I should note down that the problem is that your landlord wants to raise your rent. And when did you first move in? Yes, well, the contract began on August first, and oh, hang on, sorry, that's the ending date. We actually moved in on February the first. Before you listen to the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions eight to ten. Now listen carefully and answer questions eight to ten. Okay. Good. Now, if need be, you will have to send a letter to the Rental Tenancy Board. But as I said, first let us approach your landlord on your behalf and see if we can work out the problem before it gets to that situation. I'd be very surprised if you have to send the letter. Ninety-five percent of these kinds of problems get solved early on. Okay. Now, if you have any problems you need to discuss, feel free to come in and talk with the general manager. In the meantime, if you would just wait until we receive an answer from your landlord, we'll be able to then plan our next step. Is there anything else I could be doing? Well, you could write a letter to the RTB listing all the events as they happened, from your point of view. But as I say, hold on to it. Don't send it unless we have to. Well, that's about it for now. Thanks for your call. I'm sure we can sort this out. Thanks very much for your help. I hope we can sort it out too. Bye for now. Yes, bye. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part two. Part two. You will hear a talk by a tour guide. First, you will have some time to look at questions eleven to seventeen.
Now listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 17. Welcome to San Fernando City Tours. I'm Mark, your tour guide. We have a lot to see in three hours, so make sure you're comfortable. We'll be traveling into the historical district first, and then into the town center. After that, it's out to the harbor, and we'll finish up at the lighthouse, just past the harbor. That will take us up to midday, and after that, you're free to do what you want. At the lighthouse, you'll have a chance to visit the tea room and take photographs of the magnificent coastline. Now, as we have only three hours, we won't be able to take you around the shopping district, but we think you'd prefer to look around the shops there in your own time anyway. San Fernando has some well-known tourist attractions, the lighthouse, for example, and the National Library. However, the little-known military museum is not to be missed. Be sure to visit before you leave. Now, there's a lot to do in San Fernando. Indeed, there really is something for everyone. For those who love the water, I can recommend a trip on the Seafarer, one of the most famous boats on the San Fernando River. It does an evening trip with a three-course meal included. It's great fun for everyone, but especially for young people in their teens or twenties. After nine, there's a disco on the boat, and it gets really lively. Then there's a climbing wall near the town center. It's incredibly popular, with a large wall for expert climbers and a smaller wall for novices. There's a junior wall and a creche, so it's a great day out for those of you with kids. And if you like walking, there's some great walking tours. The city sites tour is highly recommended, as is the walking tour by the coast. But that one's only for the fit, not really suitable for children or the elderly. For more mature people, or those less able to get around, I would suggest a tour around the vineyards. It can be done in the luxury of a coach, and it's a wonderful way to explore the region's wines. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 18 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 18 to 20. Naturally, there is a charge for all these attractions, but you can get 15% off if you have an Explorer Pass. If you don't have a pass but would like one, the driver here has application forms. Just ask him for one and fill it out while on the tour. Then you hand it into the tour office. Normally, it costs $10.00 but this year it's just seven dollars. When you hand it in, you'll get your picture taken for the card on the spot, and then your card is ready to use. Remember to show it whenever you pay for anything. The discounts apply not just to tourist attractions, but some bars and restaurants. Basically, everywhere you see a red explorer symbol. Ah, we're coming up to the historical district now. If you'd like to look at That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part three. Part three. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 25.
Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 25. Good afternoon, everybody. It's Ronald Jaff with this week's edition of Movie Talk. First, let's look at the films this week in the theatre. The Kid Rides Again, When You Find Love and Wronged. The last of the three, Wronged, is definitely the best. In fact, one of the best films in a long time, with Henry Michelson and Joanne Seymour. It is about a man who gets a life sentence for a murder he did not commit. In the style of the films of the 40s and 50s, it is a modern story of a man and his wife, wonderfully played by Joanne Seymour. They fight to make people believe Thompson is the wrong man and not the killer. The strength of their love is wonderful, even after Thompson has been in prison for 15 years. Of course, I won't tell you what happens after Thompson's 15th year in prison. That would ruin the story. But if you see no other film, you should see this one. The story may be old, but the acting is great, and it will hold your attention from beginning to end. Unfortunately, I can't say the same for When You Find Love. Just another silly story about how boy meets girl, boy loses girl, boy gets girl again, and they live happily ever after. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 26 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 26 to 30. Hollywood ever get tired of such stupid films? Yet, on a New England college campus, the star of the movie, Tommy Seal, is a freshman. He meets the two years older Stephanie Fool, played by Sally Evans. In real life, she must be at least 30, not 20. Well, Billy, our hero, has had a hard time with Stephanie, after all, he is so much younger. But they fall in love in about a minute, as long as it takes to take a picture with a Polaroid. And they are both so happy, in true paradise, until, that is, until Buck, the star football player, played by Ronco Starr, the only good acting in the film, steals Stephanie away from the poor Billy. He is, after all, a senior and football star. And the rest of the film is about, naturally, how Billy gets Stephanie back, making her remember their love. He shows her that he, not Buck, is the man for her. Well, if you can stand a stupid story and bad acting, then take your eight-year-old child to see When You Find Love. Anyone older will leave the theatre before the movie ends. And finally, The Kid Rides Again, a western about a young cowboy, Kit Barnes, who stops the bad guys, the robbers, the killers, and plain old bullies, and helps the good guys. Kit is fast with a gun, and never once in this cowboy. It is the cowboy who never stays in one place for a very long time, who leads a lonely but very free life. Nothing new on the storyline, but a good classic-style western with good acting. Peter Sells as Kit catches just the right mood. He's an excellent and natural cowboy. There are beautiful scenes of the open country in the West and enough action to hold your interest. A good cowboy film for those who, like me, always enjoy seeing the Old West. And now, before we go on with the news from Hollywood, a word from our sponsor. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part four. Part four. You will now hear a speaker talking about student loans. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40.
Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Thanks for turning up today and welcome to this short talk on student loans. What you'll hear from me today are a few starting points, which should guide you in the right direction for what is suited for you. I'm assuming that most of you have an account at a bank or building society that you can draw funds from. These funds will either be your own or through a loan you may have with the bank. You may even have a credit card you can use. If you don't have a bank account, I suggest you open one with one of the major banks. It's the best option as you will find major banks have more outlets. Within the city and in close proximity to the university are HSBC in City Plaza, Barclays in Ragdale Square, National Westminster in Preston Park and Halifax in Hope Street. At this stage, I just want to inform international students that not all the services available for resident students will be available to you. As international students, you need to provide documentation stating that you have funds available to see you through the duration of your study. Different banks have different policies, so search out the one that will benefit you the most. You will also need to provide a photocopy of your passport and certification of your enrolment in the university. The most common way of taking out a student loan is either through the university or through a banking institution. If you decide to go with the university, again, you need to supply a certification of enrolment and passport if you're an international student, or if you're a resident, you will only need the enrolment details. One word of warning is that you need to be clear on the interest you will be paying on your loan. The interest level through some universities is almost as much as the loan itself, so if you borrow £10,000, you might have to pay back close to 20 Also, with student loans through the university, you have a limited time to pay them back, and this time is not flexible. You might have only one year, you might have five. As I said, different universities have different policies. This university, for example, has an interest rate of 23.5%. It's quite high, but not as high as many of the other larger universities. The other option is to take out a loan through your bank. You will find that most banks will have lower interest rates than the university. They average roughly between 14.5 to 18.5%. Banks also give you an option of over how many years you want to make repayments. You can basically choose to pay it back in a year or in 10, even more if you are finding it difficult. Make sure you have an account with the bank you decide to go with. Either a current account or a savings account is enough. With either of these accounts, you can use your card to make withdrawals and deposits from automatic teller machines at any time and make payments over the internet if you choose. You can also use Maestro, one of the systems which automatically take the money from your account at a time that you have specifically stated, and deposits it into a nominated account of your choice. You might decide to have £150 taken out each month, and each month this is what will happen. Also, check what fees apply with what services. Some services are free of charge, but they are few and far between. OK, so that's all from me. If there are any questions related to what I've covered today, please raise your hand. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.